Remember, remember, the 5th of November. Gunpowder, treason and plot. But we're up in space with a big murder case and Agnar's all floofy and hot. <laughs> Welcome to tonight's Boys from the Baltic Star on this uh, 5th of November, a.k.a. Um, bonfire Night slash Guy Fawkes Night. A tra long-held tradition since a man and his friends in some big hats plotted to blow up the house... The House of Lords, it was, um, in the Houses of Parliament many hundreds of years ago and were caught and killed. So we 1605. There we go. So we celebrate by... Well, we used to have an effigy of this man and burnt him on a big fire and celebrated because there's just something wrong with British people. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit sick in the head, really. I don't know what's up, but that was how it was. Anyway, thank you for spending uh, your... Your Guy Fawkes, your 5th of November with us. We very much appreciate it. Um, I'm sure there's nothing else you'd rather be doing, but you are here. And uh, welcome. It is episode 35, I believe, you and Seb. I think so. Episode we might, I might be way off, but... <laughs> it sounds about right. <laughs> it's, it's pretty close. I think it was. You and is next to us, by the way, so uh, I don't know if you can get money for that prediction, but we'll do it anyway. Um... It's episode 35 of Boys from the Baltic Star. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you join us for the first time and you're interested over the next uh, little while, then please consider following us on Twitter, at Boys Baltic, or right here on Twitch, at this channel. Just follow it. Um, I hope you enjoy the pretty colours. I hope you enjoy the pretty um, characters and the pretty story and the three not-so-pretty men. We try at least, but you know, none, none of us are at our peaks anymore. Um, <laughs> they're very, very sharp incline on one side and a very long drop off on the other. Thanks, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the first of us, me, the one of, of the middle of the ages. My name is Luke. Um, I play Kara and Soraya. And... Um, I'm just very happy to have you here. And I always go in the corner because that's just where it is. And I am the blue one. Next to me, the man with the uh, with the grooviest cans on his ears that a man could have is my friend and comrade Ewan. How are you, Ewan? Hey, Luke. I'm pretty good, thanks. Pretty good. Uh, are you good enough for a fist pump? Oh, let's give it a go. My shoulder's a little bit achy. Oh. Oh, I, can't, so I can't leave it. Oh, you're still hanging. Long. Oh, you left out <laughs> twice as long as the other. Terrible. Um, I had to really think about talking. <laughs> I didn't have to duck this time. I'm not between you. <laughs> that is true. You're on the end. It's been a few <laughs> weeks. <laughs> it has. And it's, um, it's, yeah, it's always nice to be next to my comrade. I feel we can do little whispers without our, without our GM hearing. Don't tell him. <laughs> and... Uh, but the man we do try and uh, keep out of our <coughs> conversations best we can. The man that brings the surprises, the mystery and the adventure. It is our GM slash the traveller referee. It's Ben in his um, in his Twin Peaks dream house. It's like a Barbie dream house, but with more backward speaking. <laughs> How are you doing, Ben? Um, Doog. Doog. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. I'm glad that you're on top four. <laughs> and uh, you, no, no fireworks for you tonight, Ben. Um, I, I I never have to um, pay for fireworks for myself because I live right in the centre of town, and they are everywhere in the earlier part of the evening. So I just go outside and stand there, and I'm surrounded by them going up from people's gardens and everything. <laughs> good, good geography, strong geography from Ben. Mm. We sometimes get them. It's been a bit quieter this year, I felt. I don't know what tomorrow night's going to be like. but Because generally, although it is bonfire night, generally people have their fireworks the closest weekend quite regularly. And especially now that Halloween, of course, is becoming a bigger thing and tends to mm. knock out mm. the weekend before, fireworks night becomes the next. There were quite a few last night, though, weren't they? Was that Diwali? Was that last night? It was Diwali last night, yes. Yeah. More so um, than... Yeah. Uh, Bonfire night, I feel, fireworks was. People just like an excuse to let off some bangers, don't they, really? Mm. And who, yeah. you know, who can blame people? I'm taking off this because it's far too hot. <laughs> well, certainly the early part of this evening, it's been 
it's <laughs> the the you know the the uh, work industry's done, done all right. right. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's good. You got to look after the economy, and you until you decide, until you decide to destroy it. But we'll do it on our terms. Which is, let's face it, what the whole celebration's about. Well, yeah, exactly. With gunpowder sifted from all the fireworks that you're storing. <laughs> Hope, hopefully not near your oven. That's, my, that's why the fireworks I let off are never quite as strong as they're supposed to be, because I'm saving at least 30, 30% from each one for when I most <laughs> need <one>. it. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. Anyway, Ben, please um, rescue everyone from our fireworks-related <laughs> chat. And lead us okay. on our magical adventure. <clears throat> so, last time, traveling is what travelers are known for. And our intrepid party finds themselves in the jump between Geeker and Dilla Brew, riding aboard the Seamstress, a liner and buckyball sports cruise. While hoping for a quiet time, they've been caught up in a murder as Brett Sagar, whom they hoped to speak with, was found in several pieces by League security. Initially, the party were all considered possible suspects, um, though the focus of the investigation, led by the tenacious Olivia Sharp, has moved on somewhat. Their seats on the ship have been paid by uh, Paral Karar, an Aslan noble, and his assistant, March Temple, has indicated that she too would like to find out what happened to Sagar and why. Video footage of the area around the crime scene had shown an unidentified Varga, and hearing tell of a Varga aboard, Agnar went in pursuit. <coughs> he found the Varga, and it was a person he knew, at least by reputation, Tilon Rack. Rack's physique is quite well distinctive. He resplends, as we pointed out last time. Mm. He clearly wasn't the Varga they were looking for. Move along, move along. However, he did have a vague recollection of another Varga aboard and the party set off in pursuit. Our travellers followed this individual, who certainly might be a match for the video. They discovered his stateroom was close to the crime scene and began a careful stakeout. They also contacted Sharp, brought her up to date, and she, in the most careful way possible, indicated that she couldn't have much to do with any approach to this individual because, well, reasons... His name is Midran Daxter, and our heroic adventurers have him surrounded. Much more importantly, as this is going on, the match between Geeka and Dilla Brew is proceeding. Dilla Brew have been put into bat for the first innings and have made it to 83 runs, but at the loss of three wickets, including both openers. They may need to dig in a little to set a good target, especially as both Ujima Flip and Jack Trevelli seem to be bowling very well. And that is where we resume the story. So, everyone is sort of clustered around Midran Daxstar's hole in the ground, his the lift going down into his into his area of the ship. Um, do you have a plan? Or are you just winging it from this point? <laughs> you know us, Ben. Wow. Winging it, it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, what do you think we do, Cara? <laughs> Any uh, ideas? Soraya. It's your Soraya. Soraya. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I'm so used to it being Agnar and uh, Cara. It is. We mix it. I quite like it. It's a little mix up team. Yeah, yeah, it's good, but it's it the blazer posse. means I need to think about things a little bit more. Soraya will um, will think about it. She's sort of considering they've been so certain in following him and making sure they don't get lost and that, and sort of getting the other crewmates over. The crewmates are there, right, Ben? Have they found it? In, well, you know, they're sitting around. Yep. In nearby You've essentially gathered your, your entire party, pretty much. There is a lot there. Um, she'll say, I guess, reading between the lines, we've got one of two choices, um, Agnar. We can either go and confront this man or 
sneak around behind this man. I don't know which you prefer. How, um, like, we've been pretty sneaky up until now. Do you feel the time is right to go big and go home? Or could more be gained by, uh, you know, trying to find out things in the shadows? <coughs> I mean, I guess if we go big and <laughs> we don't go big, then we end up going home, as you, <laughs> as you so rightly pointed out. Um, I'd imagine that they'd probably keep an eye on, if not us, they'd keep an eye. They'd be watching their backs a little bit more if we confronted them and came away with nothing. Um, what, what have we? What have we got? We got the footage from Kara. We know um, what the guy looks like, but we know the camera footage shows us, Ben, didn't it? That it. It's def it definitely could be him. Yeah, but it's it, blurry. Yeah, it's, it's, blurry. it's definitely possible. Um, as is often the case with these things, you'll need something else to confirm it. And it certainly wouldn't stand up in a court of law at this point. Yeah. I, I, in that case, I feel like we're a bit too soon for the old um, Poirot gather the three people in a room <laughs> and make and long... Uh, yeah, exactly. And make long... Well, maybe it could be Mrs. Spencer. Maybe so. I think maybe. No mate, so maybe it is worth um, just sneaking around a little bit more. Maybe we could. Um, maybe he's just gone to his room during the break. You know, either for a bit of a rest. Cause it's a lunch break. It's sort of an hour. I'm guessing. Is it been like the usual sort of roundabout? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's just. Um, going into his room to chill out or to stash something or to grab something maybe it's worth um laying low keeping eyes on the room and um trying to break in i know you're very good at doing that Agna. you're very strong with doors <laughs> doors are nice <laughs> Do doors are definitely skilled with doors yeah. <laughs> Best doors <and> medicine. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we could do that but then we could also when he comes out we could put um zoe or someone like that, I'm following him. And see, see where he goes. He, see if, anyone see if he goes. meets anyone. Yeah, now we know where he is. In fact, do we know we know to the actual room now, don't we, Ben? Because we... Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It would be nice if we could tie him to... Uh, someone. To Freya or to... Uh, La was it Lara? Lara Frost, the lady who... Uh, Laura, Laura Frost. Sorry, yeah, yeah Laura, Laura Frost, the lady yeah. whose room... To time to frost would be old frosty. That would be good stuff. That would be yeah. that would be peak uh, investigations. Either one of them. I mean, you'd imagine that they know somebody else on the ship. Yeah, exactly. So I think, like normally, you know, I me, mean, I like approaching people, but I think the approach that you've tended to take so far is the way to go. And sharp nose. And probably appreciates it if we're not too leery about it. So, yeah, let's do that. Perfect. Okay. Who, so, um, what's the plan? Who's, I, I mean, I guess Johnny. Johnny is the sneakiest amongst us, right? If we're looking for somebody to tail, tail this Varga when they leave. Uh, he feels right. But also, um, Zoe's got voodoo mind powers right Ben can she catch vibes she can catch that's, uh, that's true she can catch Not that we know of but <laughs> she can catch she can catch vibes at least can't she so she said I'm sure she's sort of maybe and, yeah and she and she can make she can make giant creatures just fall over just by holding a hand up to them so um maybe maybe that seems like a winning team the winning team of uh, Johnny and Zoe Okay. To trail him when he leaves. Keep Rose like, around to keep an eye yeah. on us, I guess. Can Julie take a photo? I'd like to, uh, you know, if she does meet with somebody. I'd like I'd like some better quality photos than that security footage we got. Right. Just to tie them together. Now, I'm right in saying, am I not, that you have, because you had that meeting with everyone together, you have <laughs> around relevant images of all of the people you 
at that time knew were possible suspects. So everybody in your party can recognise everyone that you know of. Yes, they all. Um, Cara Pingchan. We've had a few things, haven't we, that have gone round to everyone. Um, yeah. The footage of the the Varg has definitely gone round, and I think they know. Everyone knows all the players. They've got photos of Sharp. Um, no, they no. So they've got photos of Frost because that went round a few weeks, um, a few weeks in our time ago. It went round yesterday. Um, Kranev, this photos have gone round. Yes, and they're the two that we definitely know. And I think most people know Alma Kennedy. Right, okay. So, <clears throat> Fair enough. And we didn't cut. Who did Carla? Was it just the uh, Soraya that she sent the footage of the Varga? Not that it's clear and obvious footage, but, you know, um, a vague she, outline. She sent it, but then Soraya sent it on to Agnar. That's easy enough to... We can ping, we can ping that round now. Soraya will just send that to everyone just saying... Yeah. For, for your attention, keep it on the down low. If you see this guy, let us know. Kind of thing. But okay. Obviously less important, I guess, if they're the ones actually following. <laughs> you know, if, following if, the guy. If, the, if the others lose track of him, but mm. Stefan True. gets out of his seat to go to the loo and sees it and nearly bumps into him, then it's good for him. <laughs> hey, Legendary Creation, you all right? You doing good? Hey, living guys. The, living the dream? Lovely to see you, man. I hope things are good. We're just about to trail a Varga. Not not the big, buff, beautiful Varga from last week, but another Varga. Other Varga are available. Uh, yes, but less buff than less one from the security footage, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we're just trailing some random Varga across a space station ship. Isn't that, okay. That's, that's pretty much what we did with Agnar on our very first episode, wasn't it? Just trailed him around the room. <laughs> That is leaving, dude. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, cool. Okay, so you are leaving Zoe and <coughs> Johnny to keep an eye on this um, this suite area. And what um, what instructions are you going to give them as regards where they should go, or are you going to leave it entirely up to them? See, for me, Zoe's got. She's like secret agent, super skill knowledge, hasn't she? I'd almost feel like leaving her with the final say on it. Okay. Is there anywhere? Is there anywhere you and you would want them to go or to? No, I don't think so. As long as they're not, you know, obviously making it very obvious that they're trailing someone. All right. Um. I think I'm happy for them to go anywhere. Cool. Excellent. Okay. All right. So, we know what Zoe is doing. We know what Johnny is doing. What's everybody else doing? Oh, can Agnar, Agnar will just say to Johnny or uh, Johnny, Ill, or Zoe, if she, if this Varga meets with anyone, can you try and get some photos of the person that's being met with? Sure. I do, do both together chatting, you know, would be good. All right. Okay, no problem at all. Um, Soraya, do you want to hang around outside outside the Varga's room? Like directly yeah. outside. What he's he's, he's Not, he sti- you know standing outside the door, but in that <laughs> little you know the little area where there's three rooms, we can just have a little sit, maybe take a sandwich or something, make out like we're having a picnic, and then if we see them leave, we can uh, we can message up to Johnny when they're in the lift. If we sat in that area, Sorry. if we sat in that area, Ben, would someone see us as they left? They would, but that doesn't mean they'd necessarily understand the importance of you, so to speak. Because it's an <laughs> it's a six. Who we are. <laughs> how dare you not know how important we are? We're who the story is based around. <laughs> We're the PCs. How dare you? Oh. Um, they they would they would certainly um, <clears throat> identify that there were people there. The question would be how much attention they'd pay. That's what it really comes down to. Got you. Yeah. Um, Whereas if we just look like we were actually chilling out for a bit of a break, then, you know, who knows? Yeah, I'm up with that. Okay. 
Seems somewhere right. to start. At least then we're close to the room, I suppose. Uh, so I would like to ask Rose to be like, if she's going to be lurking, I want her to be like one step back. So like she's got, she's, you know, by the lifts and things like that. So she's, while we're sort of by the three, she's the next rung away, I guess, if that makes sense. With the others, just to keep an eye on things with, in case something. All right. Quick, there's like 30 really strong Varga just coming your way. You know, that kind of lookout sort of person. All right. Yep. Okay. Um, fair enough. So, um, that's Stefan and Soraya. Is that right? Are waiting there? Uh, so Agna and Soraya. Is Agna, that, Agna, Agna and Soraya. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Okay. So, um, I'll need both. Agnar and Soraya. Oh, nice. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the problem, um, every, Sparrow. Every... Because I'm drawing your stupid picture. I've, <laughs> I haven't warmed the dice up yet. Okay, here we go. I just forget. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, yes, can you, can you both roll a deception check for me, please? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Um, can we just add pure deception, else? I'm afraid. Uh, no. I've got a tiny little space. Oh. Not, uh, not, not social with deception. Uh, no, not yeah. social with deception, I'm afraid, no. Socialising with Soraya. Don't socialise with should get even worse. It's an 8 minus 1 is 7 uh, for Soraya. Okay. That's all right. I got a 5 plus 1 is a 6 for Agnon. Wow. So early days, we're really pushing the boat out on these yeah. high scores. Yeah. It out. Oh. <laughs> it's seen a strong start. Okay. Um, all right. Um, you're probably there no more than half an hour or so. Um, when Daxstar emerges from the little area where his room is and jumps onto the lift. He doesn't seem to pay any attention whatsoever to you. Doesn't notice anything out of the ordinary, or if he does, he doesn't give that away. And as you sort of try not to, uh, not to stare too much, you're in the process of, um, getting ready to let um, Zoe know that he's potentially going to be passing her. Uh, you see the lift heads down rather than up. And um, and he's gone. Um, <clears throat> is there one lift? Yes. Just one main shaft running down the centre of the of this sort of drop into the hull, yes. If I remember correctly, you said that um, the floor that we were on, that was like the main mezzanine, sort of like the floor of, you know, all the eaters. It's, it's the like middle that. of three floors, basically. Yes. And then he went, the, that, that's the he was one further down from there, wasn't he? So he's gone down from there. So he went down yeah. to his room and he's gone down instead of back up to the the way he came. Yes, which essentially means, well, Unless he comes back up again on the lift, he, the only place he can have been going is the lowest floor of this group. Yeah. Yes. Do I? Did you say last week as well that we? I'm sure I asked if there were lift numbers, and you said no, but you can see where the lift stops from where we were last. Well, week. Well remembered. Yes, because the the lift shaft is um, is is open. It's it's uh, transparent. Yeah. Um, you can actually literally look to see how far down the lift goes and stops. Not that we need to realistically know that now. Um, can I now message Zoe and just say, uh, he just got on the lift. He headed down. Um, if you call the lift back up and he's not on it, he's gone below us. <laughs> Good thinking. Okay. Um, you get a response just a couple of seconds later saying, um, I've called the lift. I'm backing away. So I'm not standing next to it when the door's open. Um, perfect. Can you keep us up to date if you 
whether you catch up with him or not. Um, I think if he's not on the lift, we're gonna we're gonna attempt to go in. Um, but it'd be nice to know when he's on the way back if you do catch up with him. Okay. All right. Um, it's probably only ten or fifteen seconds. You see the lift pass you, heading up. Um, it reaches the the top of the of the stack a moment later, and Zoe calls in and says, "He didn't get off here." So he got off on lowest floor. Yeah. Uh, okay. He's all the he's all the way down then. Um, can you see if you can follow him still? Okay. Might be a big ask, but I don't know what's down there. Um, <clears throat> all right, let me... All right. Um, Zoe um, responds. I've left Johnny up top. I'm heading down to the bottom level. Perfect. Uh, I'll relay all of this to Soraya. Okay. Um, a moment later, the lift passes back down, heading down to the bottom <laughs> without stopping. Um, and uh, you have to assume um, Zoe is aboard. Wonderful. Do you want to uh, do you want to leave it a few minutes, or do you want to shall we? Um, Soraya's pings back, <clears throat> brain pings back into it. She's let herself zone out for a minute while she feel, while she thought back to her drinks with Agnar and the handsome, uh, the handsome burger. Oh, nice, nice drinks. Yeah. <laughs> little, little embarrassed Agnar thinking, what a, what a guy. What a guy. There he is, all muscly in his tank top. And he's a Perfect. bit, he's a bit smitten there with such a, such a hunky hero. So there it is. So I'll, I'll I'll try and scan that sparrow. That can go up, but we can click on it when needed every now and again, which will be very. <laughs> um, and um, <clears throat> and then she's like, if he's gone and there's no one around, there's no time like the present. By by wasting time, it's just giving. It means it's less time until he returns, right? Yeah, makes sense. Let's do it. Let's go. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tell Johnny that because Johnny's still waiting up top. If you know, if he sees the guy coming, yes, I good. suppose from above he could, he could be. I don't know the uh, the layout, but he could double, double around, couldn't he, and get back up to where he wanted to from somewhere else, perhaps, or a different lift. But if he sees the guy coming down on the lift, Johnny, can you just let us know? In fact, if he sees the guy anywhere, I suppose from where Johnny is now. Just uh, drop us a drop us a warning, and I'll drop him a message <laughs> just saying that. Mm. Okay. Um, excellent stuff. All right. So Johnny is going to hunker down. He's going to keep his eyes open. He's going to keep looking to see um, if anything comes past him that is relevant. Um, and he he responds saying, you know, I'm in position. And Zoe basically told me to hide with pride um I'm, i found a locker and, and i'm <laughs> pretending that this is what courage looks like it's the brave thing to do it is the brave thing to do. Um, <laughs> and and zoe meanwhile is, is downstairs you haven't heard from her since she arrived so what are you two doing uh to the door well yes are, are you what are you <laughs> Are you approaching it? Are you, are you? I mean, are you listening to it? Are you <laughs> <laughs> just putting it down? Um, does um, does the door look? Looking at the door, does it look like uh, he's left anything? You know, it's hard to see a hair, for example. But. Does it look like he's left, you know, like a little match or a bit of paper and it like a, a telltale, a budget telltale? Yeah. 
Okay. Um, can you roll an investigation check for me, please, with um, intellect? I can certainly try. It's a good shout. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate you looking out for us. I, I, I appreciate us working so well as a team. <laughs> uh, well-oiled machine. <laughs> so it'd be minus one on the investigate because my jack of all trades, but plus one on my intellect. So it goes back to a zero. Okay. Okay, we're warming up now. We're warming. We're warming. Nice. Eight. Dub four. Eight. Okay. Um, as far as you can spot, there doesn't seem to be anything. Okay. Hmm. Um. Uh, Soraya, I don't suppose you've uh, <laughs> you've got any gloves, and Agnar holds up his hands. <laughs> <laughs> I've had I've had poor form with, with Um No, I do have um, breaching charges and plastic explosive though. <laughs> oh, I've got all the. I, I mean, I feel as though if I wore those on my hands, they'd leave more DNA around than yeah. than I wanted, not less. <laughs> yeah, no more DNA in slots. Quite right, Sparrow. Um, and I've got loads of t- little tool bits. Um, my little tool belt. Um, I tell you what, I do have. Agnor, and she um, pulls off her scarf, and she sort of says, "You know, like like, like a mum when a kid's got dirty hands, hold 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 him out." Yeah. And she uh, wraps one of Agnar's hands uh, in. Is he right-handed or is he left-handed? Uh, he's left-handed. Aha! Canon canonically left-handed. Um, better write that down now. <laughs> <laughs> You're um, those dark places guys left handed as well. Oh, yeah, oh. you know, go break the mold. I'm gonna have to put that in the notes. Agnar is, Agnar is left handed in capital. Um, <laughs> so Sarah sort of wraps it best she can around the hand, around the wrist. Um, you're left, a, it's a bit mittany. I guess, but and then she sort of shrugs and says, it's, it's what I've got. Okay. It's appreciated. Yeah, it's a good um, idea. Okay. He'll he'll t- take his left hand out of his, uh, his blazer, his geek's blazer, and he'll pull the sleeve down on the other hand. All right. Over the other, over the other hand. Yeah. And we'll go from there. I'm sure it doesn't make a difference now, but. Fair enough. He's okay. conscious of it, certainly. So, insofar as you can, you have basically fabric covered your your paws. Yeah. So, um, so what's next? <laughs> well, that's the important thing done, Ben. <laughs> that is the important thing. Yes. Um. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm guessing this guy hasn't left his door open. So, uh, do you just wanna you wanna blow it? No, sorry, it's not moving. <laughs> Wait, did, did it move, Ben? So, right, should I make a roll? You should make a roll. <laughs> yes. Um, the, the 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 difficulty you're going to have to hit is, I mean, it's it's an endurance check, and the difficulty <laughs> you're going to have to hit is a uh, six billion. Okay, well, nine plus one is ten. I wasted a nine <laughs> on that. Six billion. Well done. I'm afraid it didn't work. No. Ah, oh, it was worth a try. Um, is there a sarcasm stat? Can you roll that? <laughs> to be fair, though, you didn't even say the little pigs thing before you blew on it. It was <laughs> never going to happen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wait, that lowers but, the DC. But isn't he the he's the wolf? <laughs> how how the worm has turned. Mm, maybe the wolf should have blown on the door. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, this is more your this is more your thing, Agnar. This is your Amelia. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> finally we've hit something that really really freak <laughs> Agnar. Um, it turns out his great strength is, is sniffing laptops. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> oh, so that's that's what the graffiti in the toilet says anyway. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'll tell you what, what yeah. I have got, um, and she'll say, realistically, the stuff that she would have with her, right? Because she, she went back to the room, she, she got, she got yeah. back into her Ripley gear, wasn't she? She's in a Ripley yes. gear rather than too much of a geek's gear. So the scarf was the only extra thing she has otherwise it's i've got a flight suit so i can pull that on and pull my sleeves but i've got no other accoutrement 
Um, I will. So in there, I will literally have a ve- small belt kit with um, my. What's she going to fit in there? Her little tool laser and a few little spanners and things, but nothing. Like, I can't have my. Yeah, full... you won't. You won't be able to carry a full tool kit. Yeah, exactly. It's um, just a few little bits and pieces. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm probably not planning to carry um, a breaching charge around uh, around too much. So, realistically, what's in the electronics co- toolkit and what sort of size is it, Ben? Do you know off the top of your head? I don't know whether I'd have fitted much of that. Yeah, it, it's fairly substantial. It's a sort of briefcase-sized box. Yes, I wouldn't have bought that. And it contains quite a lot of stuff. But it is entirely reasonable that someone like Soraya would have chosen a few pocket tools think you know the equivalent of a glorified swiss army knife but for electricians that sort of thing like a sonic screwdriver basically a little bit less <laughs> flexible <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> than a sonic screwdriver um Damn. <laughs> you, you, you can't necessarily use it to unscrew a dalek but <laughs> but yeah the, the the same the same basic concept it would be it would be a a, a pocket tool that she could use as her you know her go-to I need to rewire something, strip a bit of cable, or, or you know, press a probe against something and see if it's got charged. That kind of thing. Yeah, Spezza knows. Um, I can't remember what was on the outside of the door. Ag- so Agnar's seen this before. This is the first time Sarai's been snooping anywhere outside of our rather lovely system. So yeah. So I leave it. I leave. I'll tell Agnar what I've got, but I leave it to you. You've you've seen it more than me, so. What do you think? What was successful? What what was needed? I mean, last, last time it was just unlocked. <laughs> and that was a struggle, if I'm honest. <laughs> and then there was but the one course... that wasn't unlocked. <laughs> and that was arguably even more of a struggle. Yes. <laughs> oh. I, mean, I mean, Johnny managed to... Uh, I saw what Johnny did, right? With the one that was opposite Brett's room. Yes. Could I vaguely describe from what I would have gathered from that, the sort of tools he used and the process that was involved? Not down to detail, but, you know, a rough. I'm picturing this in my mind. You're basically standing there talk, talking to Soraya, <laughs> who is quite... Quite a technically competent person. Yeah, yeah. And you're saying, so what Hands he did was he did, he did stuff. Right. He got this, out this little boxy thing. In this part of the corridor, okay. Okay, this part here, he was doing stuff. There was stuff over here. He did nothing over there. It was all over here. He did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I will respond by saying something. Oh, what you mean? He did the mandy bobbly into the splibbly bobbles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, I mean, he didn't give me the name, but it was definitely. I mean, he who knew where on the door he would have accessed um, whatever he did, right? The location mm-hmm. on the door, where stuff is. So, so I'll hold up a couple of tools. Did he did he use the spinning whirler man or the hegemy winkle? Did his tools look it, like either like any of those two things, Ben? Um, roll an intellect check for me, please, Agnar. <laughs> Uh, that is an eight plus zero. Okay, or an eight. Zero, either way. The only thing you can say with um, confidence is that what he used looked kind of cobbled together and homemade and appeared to sort of fit inside his closed fist and had a coil of wire associated with it. No, he didn't use either of those two things. Um I mean, it looked like a kind of a speciality type piece of kit, if I'm honest. Did you? Uh, did you there was a coil of wire. A coil of wire. That you got sounds, a coil of wire. That sounds. He sort of put it in his fist and held it up to the door. That and, sounds magnetic. That sounds electromagnetic or something. Let me see what I've got. Let me well, see. If I wouldn't, I can, let me see if I can I pull some. Know. I've got some wire. If I pull some bits apart, I should be able to get some of that. I've got. I've you got know, Johnny's back, just upstairs, upstairs right? Big. We could just. <laughs> you could just give him a call. <laughs> He's watching the lift right now. That's true. Rose is still around. <laughs> Get him down here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, what you're what you're going to do 
is um, call Johnny to come down to you. Yeah. Call Rose to take over the locker hiding duties. Yeah. Uh, yep. That right? Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Like, yeah. So. I'm also going to sort out the um, <laughs> It did go on. It takes a few um, moments. Um, can you roll 1d6 for me, please, Luke? Yeah. It takes um, whatever two is. It, this isn't the time. Oh, thing. no. <laughs> oh, uh, no. Uh, uh. Okay. No, I'm, I, there's something else going on at the same time, and I'm just making sure that your roles determine the pace and things like that, okay? I, I see. Right. So it's a few moments later when um, the lift opens and Johnny walks out, um, looking like he doesn't have a care in the world because he's about to do something furtive. <laughs> and the thing about Johnny is when he's doing something furtive, he looks completely relaxed like he's doing nothing wrong because that's how you get away with it. <laughs> he's got the experience. I, I love his swagger. Okay. Confidence. Yeah. So Johnny is going to um, have a go at the door. Um, he actually leans against the door jam, um, subtly indicates that you two should make yourself look slightly less suspicious, not actually be clustered around him and back off a little bit. <laughs> And he takes out this little device from his pocket. He pops it against the door. Um, he seems to modify control on it. Um, it's all completely silent. And... Oh, good roll. Okay. For him After a second, he... <coughs> moves subtly away from the door again. And... Um, walks past you back to the lift without saying a single word calls the lift and then just stands there waiting to get on the lift this guy this guy's cool man well, he's much cooler than when we first met him so i like that it must be said there was a bit of there's a bit of excitement in that oh, goodness that is, that is so cool that was pretty cool um, should we try the door then yeah, e equally as casually, I guess. Trying or trying to be as casual. Uh, so I <laughs> wanders over to the door in a best uh, casual thing, and just sort of tentatively uh, leans one shoulder against it. Not okay, it's much, a sliding just... door, so you'd have to slide it open. So, rather like, than that's, leave. Yeah, so you know when you lean and then you sort of like slide along a wall or mm -hmm. something like that sort of thing. Okay. Um. It doesn't move. Oh. Not at all. And while you're doing that, you both get a message from Johnny saying, I opened the lock, but it's deadlocked from the inside. Oh. Now that means someone's got to be in there. Interesting. Interesting. Options now. I mean, I guess we could we could knock and see if anyone answers. <coughs> we could go back and get your breaching charges and knock and see if anyone answers. <laughs> yeah. That's that's uh, more like <laughs> knocking the Dungeons and Dragons sense, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. The murder hobo kind of knock. Yeah. Yeah, which isn't very us, if I'm honest. Um, there's, 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 there's cameras on this thing again, isn't there? So there's going to be a camera feed that needs sorting at some point. Not, although Kara's busy. In you're you're not in line of a camera at the moment, but you would have um, showed up on the it. camera approaching and leaving this this corner of the of the thing, yeah. Yeah, I, and I think, um, I think Sharp has an idea of what we're up to. As long as we're not, you know, blatantly live on camera. She might Truthfully, be able to I'd be surprised if Sharp knows what you're doing, because I'm not convinced you two do. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a fair, that's a fair comment. I can't really argue with that, can I, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I, don't, I have no idea what's going on. I really do. Hmm. 
Uh, Ewan, it's your turn to roll 1d6 for me, please. Oh, no. Wonderful. That's a five. Five, thank <clears throat> you. Okay. So, what's the plan? Do we... No, this is hard. Either we go back and wait for someone to return, which could be hours, or we knock, or we just go to hell of it. I've got all I've got is one smoke grenade, which I could like open up. There's is there a little crack under the door and try and smoke someone out? Um, the the doors are essentially um, sealed. Sealed. So it's a spaceship, so they yeah. they tend to have. Um, seals at periodic areas and though these ones are designed to open in an emergency if they were too weak they might buckle so Got so it. they they can't be allowed to be that so they need to start in case for some reason the corridor depressurizes they need to keep some safety generally they need to buy you enough time to get into a suit yeah yeah Soraya, I've just um, I've just remembered that don't these don't these doors open in emergencies? <laughs> I'm sure I remember reading that in my uh, in my fire evacuation depressurization evacuation plan. How how big an emergency is there? An, is there a fire alarm nearby? Is there a sprinkler system? What's the? Um, is there something we can pull? I don't want to set something off. I mean, this might be this might be escalating things a little bit further than Sharp could help us out with, perhaps. That is true. It sounds like she's going to wash. <laughs> she's going to wash our hands of us if we, we don't, get. We don't. Yeah, we don't want to do a Stefan. No, we never want to do a Stefan. No. <sighs> Would anyone inside Ben theoretically know that the the door had been unlocked? If somebody were inside, they would only know if they'd heard something happen. Okay. Um, and Johnny's quiet about it all. It's mm. it's a it's a standard stateroom door. It doesn't sort of provide alarms when it's unlocked or locked because normally that's done by the person coming yep. in and out. Yeah, makes sense. Presumably, though, they have some. When the Varga returns, they would have had to. If there is somebody inside and they don't have a way of opening deadlocks from the other side of the door, they would have had to have knocked or asked the other person to let them in anyway. Right? That's certainly a... Possibility. A, fa <laughs> a fairly straightforward possibility, yes. Yeah. So there's nothing to say, well, I suppose, if they knew what they were going to do and they knew it was going to take a long time, then it might not be them returning. But there's nothing to say they wouldn't unlock the door, assuming that it was um, our friend Bodran <coughs> returning. Indeed. Um, Soraya reached out her hand and uh, bangs on the door. Uh, okay. <laughs> I got you there. And you and, uh, and uh, to, uh, to, uh, Raph, thank you. A good bit of cosplaying. Thank you. I appreciate it when you do that. <laughs> Lovely stuff. It's my wonder finding feature. <laughs> redeeming oh, feature. You put me <laughs> redeeming features. <laughs> okay. What's she the tries to make it, she the tries to make she tries to make it sound officious. She tries to make mm -hmm. it sound like the sort of knock a security officer might give. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Not that I'd know. Sadly, it wasn't the big head, Sparrow. It was just some knocking. It's the closest we get to cosplaying. It, it was more <laughs> phone than actual cosplay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll sort out a straw and a hole in the uh, in the head at some point, and then I'll be I'll be able to cosplay a lot more comfortably. I like to think that Sparrow right. was halfway making through a drink and just heard over the speakers. You know, cosplay. Cosplaying. <laughs> it's, it's spilling. It's like the tea bag spilling or whatever. It's just spilling. Like, what, what, what? <laughs> okay. Um, there is no response. Um, 
and she knocks again, officially. Um, and she says, uh, Seamstress Security, um, is anyone in here? Again, still no response. No response. Um, um, she knocks one. Uh, she doesn't knock this time, but she says, um, we've. We found the. Um, we found the. It's not an owner, is it? The what would be, someone be called if they had a, had a room? The not just occupant. Occupant. Yeah. Okay. That's the occupant. We've um. We found the occupant um, passed out in a corridor. Is there anyone in there? Still nothing. Um, it's, um, it's really serious. If you're in, if you're in here, it's really serious. They're in a very bad way and we could really do with some help. Can you roll, um, persuade with social, please? Not social. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, persuade comes out. Can I now, just while he's doing that, just chime in and say, um, I'm part of part of the medic team. We could do with some uh, some medical background, and he'll list off some things that he would know would be potentially Good. a common. Then, um, let's make this a chain then. Agnar, can you please roll to find out if this will help? Oh no! <laughs> can you please roll um, medic with education? Oh, I don't know. I've, I've rolled. I'm keeping. Ooh. I'm keeping my roll, Ben. By the way. Yep, that's fine. Yeah. And then whatever you get, we'll add as a mod to um to Luke's go. Okay. That's not bad. I rolled an eight, but between medic and education, I get a plus five. Oh, wow. Um, okay. So that's 13, which means, um, Luke, you get to add five to whatever you rolled. Oh. I, I rolled a nine plus one minus one. So a nine plus yeah. five is a total of 14. All right. I, I like the way Ben's rolling dice and there's not even <laughs> anyone in the room. <laughs> no response. No response. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I thought we were com pretty convincing, so I, if I'm honest. I, th I tell you what. No response on a chain rolled 14. Is That's pretty, that's pretty <laughs> peak. That 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 means it's pretty it's unlikely. Pretty you're much unlikely. To talk your way in, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, we have. Soraya has. Um, oh no, I don't want to do that because uh, that makes things a little bit awkward. No. Let's ignore that. That would have been an interesting but awkward idea. So let's not do that. We like interesting, but too awkward is a bit awkward. Um, <laughs> while while you're thinking, so uh, um, I'll just check in with Zoe, I guess, and see if she's caught up with the Varga. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be now. If you want to do your bit first. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so... You call Zoe, and she says, uh, I got off the lift at the bottom. No sign of him. Down here, we've got the same um, the same arrangement as on the second floor. But there is a and access to the emergency exits. Mm. 
there's access to emergency exits in here. Uh, do you know where the emergency exits leave, lead? Yeah, well, they say there's basically a big hatch at the bottom, right in the centre of the arrangement, with um, with rails around it, saying you know escape pods and that kind of thing. Emergency access, escape pods. Okay. Um, ben, you told us that Sharp had said to us that you can't use escape pods when in jump, or is it just you can't escape via another ship? You can't launch escape pods while you're in jump. You'd have to drop out of jump to launch them. They'd be, um, it would not go well if they were launched. <laughs> um, they're not jump capable craft. Yeah. Um, uh, cool. Uh, that doesn't mean you couldn't theoretically sit in an escape pod, you understand? You just couldn't yeah, launch yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Could be setting something up for an escape or for a. Yeah, could have a nest in there. Could be helping someone out who's hiding in there, like a stairway kind of person taking them some food or something, or just waiting it out. Or just waiting and it I out. will say to Sarai, he'll relay all this information, and and Sarai will relay that back to Agnar as well. I was like, maybe that's what it is. Is it worth Zoe poking around, see if you know, see if it's been opened recently? Well, if you unless you've got any ideas with the door, do you want to? Should we, we go join her? Yeah. Because that feels like it, it's going to be a very quiet, secluded place, and I don't want her to uh, end up the same way as Brett. Good, good, cool. Let's do it. All right. Okay. So you guys get into the lift and head down. And as the lift doors open, you walk out and almost immediately spot Zoe. She's, you know, trying to look nonchalant, sitting in a chair in the lobby area there. And um, she gets up to join you as you walk past. And she points out that what she's looking at here is the, you know, the main access to the rooms that come off this level. And then the hatch that leads to the emergency exit. Uh... Uh, perfect. <laughs> when we're on our way down, can I can I can I'll message Johnny and just say, Johnny, can you uh, that device of yours? Can you relock the door, please? Okay. Um, all right. It's not, you know, it's not of great importance. Don't get yourself in trouble over it. But Johnny it'd be will nice head, if it was. Johnny will have tampered down. with. Um, and he says he'll let you know when he's when he's done. Thanks, Charlie. Theoretically, then, Ben, what a guy! You, could what a guy? Could you? Oh, <laughs> what a guy! Could you only be in this space if you came down that lift, or are there ways that people could get in another exit and shoot up from down here? You mean this lobby area? Yes. Where you are now? Yes. Um, each of the lifts basically serves a single spoke sticking out into the into the ship yeah so there's no other main public access route down now there may be all sorts of service passageways or things yeah, like that hidden around but there's no other regular route no oh interesting okay so there's no way there's no way out unless they've gone through service ducts or are in that emergency thing as far as we know Unless, unless he's gone into one of the rooms, of course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And there's three rooms in there's three rooms in this level as well, isn't there? Mm. There are nine rooms in this level. Nine rooms in this level. Three blocks of three. Okay. Right. Okay. So Where is the? Sorry. <coughs> nine rooms and an emergency exit pod area. Okay. Yep. Is that off of the main corridor, as the corridors for the three sets of three rooms are? Essentially, that... if, if you imagine it as if um, there's... where well, you get off at the lift, the, the area in front of you is on all of the... all of the floors is the sort of lounge area with a couple of seats and benches. Yeah. Then... The three other cardinal points that aren't that one are the three entrances to three rooms in each. 
the emergency exit is taking up the far wall of the lounge part on this level. Okay. So, so it, it, it makes four. the lounge on this level a bit smaller, but on the other hand, you're closer to the emergency exit. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And there's no one down here that we can see apart from us and Zoe. You are currently the only people down there. Is this the scuzzy area of town? Or is it no, generally the speaking, area? the lower you go in the um, in these shafts, the larger the rooms get, okay. because that's kind of how circumferences work. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, so broadly, you tend to find more expensive rooms um, further down. Um, that's not universally true because there are certain suites built in special locations but fundamentally yeah. that's that's useful rule of thumb agnar will say plus you know that the richer people are going to be closer to the escape pods than yeah, of course. you know the scummy scummy right. area i've watched that old earth movie titanic i know <laughs> they'll 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 pull the chain doors on all the commoners when when it all goes wrong one person to a yeah. pods and all that Okay. Um, well, should we cancel out? Rather than knocking on nine doors, should we cancel out someone lurking around the emergency pods? Yeah, we could do that. Or we could. I mean, do you want to leave? Do you want to leave Zoe here by the lift in case they're hiding in one of the three sets of three rooms? Yeah, that makes sense. Areas to make sure that no one does a runner. Yeah. Um, or call Johnny down when he's done and he can do that. Potentially. Z Zoe, I, I've never never had deep conversation with you on this, I guess. Can you... You've said before about getting a vibe about things. Do you get any vibe down here at all? Um... <clears throat> okay. She, um, all right. She sort of, <coughs> her face sort of drops completely expressionless for a moment. And she says, no, nothing right now. Does that mean that there's nobody nearby or you just, you can't tell? Or I'm not, I'm not getting anything. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean it's impossible they're here, but I'm not picking anything up. Okay, that's fair. Thanks. Thanks, Zoe. Come on, I want to open some emergency pods. I want to see okay. how many I want to see how many stowaways there are. Let's go, let's go play around with the things that could possibly save yes. our lives if anything Yay. goes wrong with the ship. Not yeah, hard. I mean to be, fair, to be fair, to be fair, this corridor doesn't necessarily lead to the same escape pods that your corridor does. So you yeah, probably yeah, sure, yeah, sure. It's just the poor people who live in it's this one. Else. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care about these guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so you approach the um the emergency exit door. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. There is a little um, sign on the door saying that the emergency exit is um, um, is alarmed, and if you open it, uh, lights will flash, and um, there'll be a siren as well. Does it appear to have been tampered with in any way, shape, or form? Roll an investigation with um, intellect, please. I will. Um, they cancel each other out. I probably won't be able to see it because it's a four. Nothing you can tell. No. Hmm. Um. Uh, 
Can Soraya message uh, can Soraya call Sharp, please? Good shout. Um Yes. Um Hello Officer Sharp, it's um it's your favourite uh, fish fan here. How are you doing? Um up until this very moment I've been doing fine. Why do I <laughs> feel that's about to change? No, 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 please, please. Um, I, I I, hate to think I'm making your day worse. Um, we're down in, and she says of where we are. Yep. Um, you haven't had a ping up at all on security about someone opening emergency exit or anything down here in the last 15 minutes or so? Uh, let me take a look. Thank you. Um, she carefully examines her logs and says, nothing's come through. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's really helpful. Uh, yes, Agna. Ask her if she can uh, disable the alarm feature so we can go through and check. Oh, did you hear that? Uh, my my friend and colleague Agna wants uh, to nose, nose around. Is, would that be possible for you to disable um, the alarms for here just for a few minutes. Um, roll a persuade with intellect, please. Oh no, with social, please. Oh, Agnor, why don't you <laughs> ask these things yourself? Well, I did. I just yeah. asked the wrong person <laughs> over my shoulder. Over my shoulder. Stop. <laughs> stop backseat driving. It's all right. My persuade is minus three. So. Ah, okay, that's all right. That might be okay because I've done a six and a three, which is a nine plus one minus one, so a nine. Okay. Um, she, um, she says it's a modular automated system. If you pull the door, the alarm goes off. Um, it's designed to always work every time it's safety equipment. I can't turn it off. What I can do is let security know that we're running tests down there and not to worry about the alarm going off. Okay. Oh, I like that. That's good. Um, this isn't going to deafen us, is it? No, it's loud, but not intended to punish those who are trying, <laughs> trying to escape. Battle. How dare you escape? How dare you escape? <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be great. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, sir, so I might actually, it might flush him out. If he's in a room. Okay. Yeah. Zoe, stay I by mean, stay by that entrance, Zoe. If it's if it's non bypassable, then perhaps they haven't gone down here. But I suppose we should at least open the door and find out if an alarm goes off. I just I just want to look anyway now. I want to, <laughs> I want to see if there might be something in there that's been stashed in there for later. It might be a reason why uh, the murderer is still hanging around. Do you know what uh, I mean? So, like, yeah. As Sharp said, if she was the murderer, she would leave immediately. Maybe there's a reason why someone wants to jump out just as we get to the lab brew, you know? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Well, we're all clear to go, so I suppose yeah. we do. Okay, there we go. Um, okay. I, I, I get the feeling that you really want to do the honours. <clears throat> oh, do I ever. Just uh, give, me, give me a second, and can Agnar position himself so he can see the three... Corridors leading down to the rooms. Yes. And he'll just keep an eye out for anyone. For okay. Varga, I suppose, leaving. I'm guessing a lot of people might possibly hmm. not get the message. They might. <laughs> anyway. All right. That is true. So you are, you're basically, I mean, you, you can easily see from where, from essentially, if you just turn around and put your back to that um, emergency exit, you will be able to see um, the, the three entrances the only the only question is the one directly opposite you could be blocked if the lift is at this floor yeah got it okay oh, yeah. survive looks maintenancey at least as well so and it currently isn't so cool. so right now you've got lucky there <laughs> okay right. all right so survive going to pull open the door is that right Yep, she puts her hands on whatever she needs to do, whether it's a door or a button or a thingy. Takes a breath in, wink, winks at Agnar. And 
pulls or pushes or whatever it is she has to do. Um, yep, yeah, it's a it's a um, push, or you just grab hold of the handle. It has a a sort of um, a mechanical device attached. So when you push against it, it initially slides further into the door, as if you're pushing down a big lever. Yeah. And then once it passes a certain point, it stops having unlocked the door and then the door can be swung open, just keep going forward. So effectively, if you just put your, the flat of your hand against this and pushed it in, it would push the door open. Well, that, that's good for a, for a panicking crowd. Um, this is the theory, yes. Yep. Cool. Well, that's what she does. Um, she doesn't swing it open with gusto. She mm -hmm. pushes it open cautiously. I'm guessing it's lit because, again, it's to help people escape. They don't want people to be tripping over their feet. We're not playing Alien, you know, it's not dark the, flashy lights, I'm assuming. Obviously, the lounge you're standing in is already lit. There is also a little surround of um, green lighting around the hatch, which sort of um, delineates its edges so that people can see it, even if the lights go out and identify what it is. Yep. Um, and indeed, the if, even the, the handle that you have to push is literally lit up with a little glowing symbol with a with a hand print basically on it saying push here you know it, it is clearly designed for people who aren't that familiar with ship procedures to be able to use it when they need to um so yes soraya um takes her hand grabs hold of this handle pushes it through at a certain point she can feel that it it reaches the unlock point and then the door begins to swing open, revealing a lit but comparatively dimly lit space on the other side. Um, a sort of um, bit of fairly gloomily painted corridor lit in red lighting. Oh, classic. And there is no alarm. There is no flashing light. Oh, oh. Oh, well, that's and my that's roll. We're going to take our break. That's oh. where my that's where my roll of four went wrong. <laughs> I mean, that's 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 good information to get, though, isn't it? Yeah, and also good information to. Uh... Anyway, let's <laughs> let's leave it on that. <laughs> <it says. laughs> we strong, should come back. Strong cliffhanger, then strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, definitely. <laughs> Okay. Yes, we, are, we, we definitely need to take our break now. Cool. cool. Then uh, that is what we're going to do. We're going to take five minutes. We'll vanish off, uh, grab a drink, do what we need to do, and we'll be back for the toast in the second half. Thank Brilliant. you, anyone watching. We shall uh, do that now. See you Bear soon. with me. See you very soon. Hang on a sec. You're getting a, you're, you two are getting ahead of yourselves. It takes me about 30 clicks to do anything. <laughs> I know, but we don't like to say see you soon when you're talking everyone through what you're, what you're doing. It's, yeah, because no, normally you give them basically a user guide. Yeah, yeah. Right the off the bar, it, it, off the bar. <laughs> That's the best part of the show, if I'm honest. <laughs> and the last thing I need to do is click us. Three bar. Click.
Um, <laughs> good evening. I've made an absolute blunder. I'm sorry, everyone. It's very disrespectful to Greyhill to put other things on the screen. Off. I know, it's very upsetting. Let's get rid of them. That's better. Okay, we're allowed to be here. We have to be here because we're here. Um, good evening. If you've joined us at the break, welcome to uh, Boys from the Baltic Star. If you've been here all along, thank you for coming back. If you're vodding, I um, hope you're having a lovely whatever day it is. We had a great session. You'll love the ending, I tell you. It's brilliant. <laughs> will, they, will they love the ending, Ben? <laughs> I hope so. Okay, that's good. Right, okay. Cool. Um. We are at the most important part, which um, at half time, we come back from our break and we toast uh, a very important person. Um, it's so important that um, even though I'm not drinking tonight, I have got one wee, one wee shot there. It's not a wee shot. It looks like it could be a wee shot. It's like a <laughs> Scottish wee. No, it's not a Scotsman's wee, as in small. Okay. Um, and the reason why it's important is because um, this man was a barman. He was no. He was more than a barman. He was a, a connoisseur, an artist of alcohol. He was um, the vodka vaudevillian. He was the uh, the wizard of whiskey, the bishop of beer, and his death was a rum do indeed. He is the man, the myth, the legend, the late great Greyhill Best. The Greyhill Grey Best. Oh. <laughs> and those are my next two D and D characters. I'm rolling up the Wizard of Whiskey, <laughs> Wizard of Whiskey, and the Bishop of Beer. <laughs> A cleric, I feel. <laughs> oh, dear. actually, tomorrow can I be the Wizard of Whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> No spoilers. We'll talk about tomorrow at the end. <laughs> okay, <Okey dokey. laughs> <laughs> Oh, it wasn't for our, it wasn't for our role playing. It was for mine and your private role playing, Ben. Oh, okay. Yeah, then definitely. Yeah. Ah, that's right. Yeah, as long as you've got a suitable <laughs> outfit, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're always you're always um, the the wizard of wine. So it'd be quite nice to be the wizard of whiskey to go with you. We could be a pair of wizards together. I'll show you. My, I'll show you my sleeve. All right. Anyway. Like a gaggle of wizards. <laughs> a gaggle of wizards. The wizard what, what of wine, the wizard of whiskey, the wizard of... We've got a map, Ewan. Some other alcohol beginning with W. We've got a map. We have got a map. Oh, that means I'm going to put combat bar on instead. I don't know if it's going to be combat, but... Oh, no, it's okay. I'm not taking over too much there. Yes. Da, da, da. But there's the red light. There's everything. Try that. We're going to call this the Roxanne Corridor. I think that'll probably work. Okay. Oh, yes. There we go. Okay. So, <coughs> the corridor you can see on the left is the emergency corridor that yep. you're looking into. Yes. And if I... Plus my pencil uh, side. Um, as it is at the moment, um, what you should be able to see is I've sort of put you loosely where you are entering from off the map on the left, okay? Yep. Yes. Lo loosely, loosely. Um, like. Yes. <laughs> As we enter, so, before anyone looms out of the darkness, going mm -hmm. or anything, um, Soraya will sort of look at Agnar's, uh, his, his, his trousers, his sides, his pockets, and realise he doesn't appear to be... Look at his trousers. Look at his trousers, <laughs> it's very important. Appears that he doesn't appear to be packing in any way apart from one, which won't help us in a firefight. So, um, she sort of reaches to one of her one of her um, rip, Ripley Ripley belts, because she does carry around sidearms, and I believe, Ben, sidearm carrying is acceptable in this kind of ship. I think we talked it about is. That. Yes. Um, she's got a Gauss pistol and a laser pistol, and knowing Agnar's skill with a shotgun, she wordlessly pulls out her Gauss pistol and sort of nudges it into him, carefully, 
<laughs> the toilet to go off. Just sort of, you know, turns, <laughs> turns it around in a hand and sort of hands it wordlessly to him while not Gun taking the eyes off the one. corridor, I guess. Yeah. Gun <laughs> Don't take my little finger. Okay. Uh, Agnar will just give her a nod and take it. Uh, he'll also he'll point at uh, wherever it is the clip would go in this gun and shrug his shoulders. Uh, yeah. She reaches into her um, like her trousers, you know, the old trouser, the combat trouser pocket. And pulls out. Oh, I've got loads of clips, but I I wouldn't carry too many. It's not like I'm going to start a war. Um, I'll I'll pull out three magazines. Oof. I'm guessing they're sort of handgun size magazines, Ben. Uh, like, they're not like big wheels of cheese or anything. No, they 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 fit within the uh, within the hand grip, and they are, um, yeah, they they are definitely uh, you know, pocketable. So just to have a few of them would not be ludicrous. It wouldn't look like I was about to take over. I wouldn't look like a bandolero about to take over. <laughs> no, they they are pocketable things. <laughs> and, and they and they carry a fairly substantial amount of ammunition as well. They are big, aren't they? I've got loads of magazines them actually. Um, Agnar doesn't know. You'll have to tell me when I run out. <laughs> actually, I'd probably how much? How many do they have in each? Um. I will look that up. So I might not even have that many magazines. I might just have that many rounds, if that makes sense. So I might not even have three magazines. So I've got 40 rounds. That's what I've got. So it's important Mm. to do the, um, it's important to do the housekeeping first, of course. Yeah. yeah. We might, we might come across nothing, but if, if we get bored and we want to shoot some space spiders, I could put a, I could put a bottle at the end of the corridor. And you could have a little shoot. Security, know we're down here. <laughs> then everyone else would as well. <laughs> so um, you have your standard sort of laser pistol, though it's a Tech Eleven one, yeah. um, a three D plus three one. Uh, yeah. It's a hundred rounds in a clip in a magazine. Sorry. No, oh, in which case, um, mine says magazine. 40, which means, hang on, let me just double check. Um, let me just double check what my thingy was. Zero, zero, zero. I have been rubbing off those, so that suggests that I have been using bullets off them. You've only got 40 rounds left then, mate. That's it, it's in the gun. But she'll do um, she'll do 10, 20, 30, 40, wordlessly, and point at the gun. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay. You've got 40 rounds, which is more than enough. What we what, Agnar, we're not going to fight an army of zombies or anything, are we? So you're all right. Yeah, yeah. Agnar will stick a thumb up. Give a little nod. Okay. All right. So um, there you are. Now, a quick description. You're at uh, what appears to be one end of a long, fairly narrow corridor. It's lit periodically by um, pools of red light. Um, and it stretches essentially <coughs> quite a fair way down before coming to an end. On the side that you are, there are a series of small hatch doors that are essentially identical to the one you've just come through. And on the opposite side, um, periodically, but not quite as often, there are um, larger um, hatch doors leading off and away from you. Okay? Yes. So there is one of those larger hatch doors pretty much opposite. Is the corridor lit enough that we can see down the full length of it? Yes, it is. And it is uh, empty of people? It is empty of people. Okay. Is it empty of large knobbly bobbly bits or boxes or anything like that it appears to be um well first of all it appears to be essentially circular in cross section not yep. um not rectangular it is a round passageway basically and there appear to be no obstructions of any kind as if it is in fact kept clear for people to access <laughs> in the <emergency. laughs> Good health and safety right there. There you go. 
I always have to get used to this clean sci-fi as opposed to dirty sci-fi where someone's left like a, a stupid box somewhere. Um, so right as she steps in at this point, realizing she's next to a an actual military man, um, and not it, it may we we may just be wandering in, but we we it's the unknown, right? So she sort of. Um, sort of half shrugs to him you know like what what do you want to how do you want to play this kind of way uh agna will sort of point to each door in town and just go one and then the first door and one and then the second door and one and then the third door uh can he use his i suppose he'll he'll point to the the door that's right in front of us Mm-hmm. And then can he use his military tactics to uh, help us open the door and go in in such a way that we would be in a good formation or not be surprised or not be susceptible to just getting blown away as soon as we open the door? Probably better <clears> than <throat> using your strength. Well, um, <laughs> you think so. Certainly, you can open the door in such a way, by knowing what you're doing, that you can avoid um, any any additional risk from opening it. You can make sure that you're cleared into the sides of it and you're not exposing yourself unnecessarily to any fire or anything that happens. Um, but at this stage, it can't really give you any inherent benefits, if you see what I mean. Yeah, OK. We don't know what's the other side, I guess. No, I'm afraid not. OK, cool. Um... The, uh, the the double door directly opposite you, however, is extravagantly well covered in um, labels in multiple languages with lots of graphics indicating that it's the way to the escape pod. OK. Um, before we go any further if Agnar just walks down a little bit that door that's on the left of our map is there anything on this side of that door that tells us where it goes okay so the the one essentially whatever that is uh, about five squares down yeah um it looks essentially identical to the one you've just come through. Um, and as you walk, you start to realize that um, these passageways have an unusual relationship with gravity. Yeah. Um, as you move, you're, you're sort of finding that you walk slightly at an angle and then slightly back down again in order to keep you vertically above your feet. So you you find yourself walking just a little bit up the side of a the side of the corridor, oddly, and then back down again as you reach the hatch. Um, you've seen this kind of thing before. It's it's quite common in environments where a set of service passages like this. Um, are connected at odd angles to things on a ship so that when people come through a hatch, gravity's the right way up as they enter it, even if the multiple hatches wouldn't be at the same angle because they'd be at different points on a on a curving surface, say. Yeah. Um, so this is not an unfamiliar experience. Uh, the The inside of that hatch appears to be completely unmarked. Um, except for a little um, notice by the um, handle that is essentially the exact reverse of the one you've just used. If you pull on it, you could pull the whole door open. Um, There is a small, very small notice again, reminding people that this door could be alarmed. So don't open it unless it's an emergency. Um, But on 
this side there is in fact a little light next to that which um, is glowing indicating that the alarm system is active okay would it be safe to assume seeing as where we came from and the shift in gravity that each one of these hatches services a different area of the ship from the one that we just came from um it seems a fair assumption um yeah <coughs> certainly plausible that because of the way it's mounted onto a curve um the the lounge in nearby units might be geographically very very close to the one you're currently you've just left yeah because they'll all be sort of interlocked around each other for for efficiency of space and this could be multiple entrances from similar locations yes okay um okay i'll go back to soraya and he'll get uncomfortably close and he'll whisper in her ear and he'll uh, he'll Tick, just say tickle, tickles on her ear with the fur. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying not to make her laugh. <laughs> um, the, and he'll say the door. I think the doors on the left all lead to other areas of the ship. Um, they've got they've got lights that look like they indicate whether the alarm is working or not. Do you want to check all of those first before we investigate the escape pods? No, I'm sure. Whisper back. Um sure if he's gone through there we've lost him yeah it's a pointless endeavor isn't it yep. um okay and then agna will wander down unless sarah wants to go no she's happy to let you wander down nice to see a general leading from the front <laughs> for a change, for change um, <laughs> certainly for agna he'll <laughs> he'll just uh he'll make his way down the corridor I suppose as quietly as you can and just check the lights on each of the doors on the left. OK. Um, as you make your way down the passageway. Um, oh, yes. Can you roll a stealth check for me? Uh, do I get dexterity with this? Yes. Is that generally yeah. the... Perfect. Oh, it's a good thing, too, because you rolled a five... Plus a three total, so an eight. Okay. All right. Um, so as you um, move your way down, you go past each and every one of those closed doors. Um, and by the time you get to the bottom, um, all the way down here, you've confirmed that every single one of them has got the same light lit saying that the alarm system is or appears to be active uh wonderful he'll make his way back up to the top again as mm -hmm. subtle as he can um and <laughs> what i suppose he will do is he'll check the light on the side of the door that they just came through okay because yes. if that's showing they're still active then it means nothing realistically does it indeed like it. Um, the light on the hatch you came through is not lit. Okay, perfect. Work. He'll give a thumbs up to Soraya and sort of shake, shake his head and point over his shoulder. Okay. Um, Soraya will point towards the big door opposite them with a shrug. All right. Yeah, the Agnar. The big door opposite also has, it's actually a sort of double door hatch, um, and it has the same arrangement of um, handles that you push in order to open them. And uh, and it is directly in front of you. So what are you going to do? Um, it do it, that, this doesn't have a little alarm to light. Like, what would the point be of having extra alarms or anything, right? Does it? <laughs> that, we can see, that we can see you. Okay, cool. There is no indication whatever that there is an alarm at this point. <laughs> Good question, though. Thank you. That's <laughs> Woo -woo -woo. Okay. Worth asking. <laughs> Let's um, ease our way in carefully, I guess. Um, what Sarah will do is um, 
she's going to push on it and then mm-hmm. ease her back into it with the idea that she'll half open it and give Agnar the chance to go around first if he wants to, or she's happy to, she'll offer both, I guess. But she'll sort of open okay. it because she's, she's lost a hand if she's doing that. So it's better to open it and let someone go through with full, with full control. I suppose. I'm with you. Okay. So, um, you, um, push open the, um, the door, um, and what it, um, shows immediately as you peer through the crack carefully as you push it open um uh, (coughs) what it reveals is a fairly small um airlock space with another door on the other side Are there windows in the doors? Is, the win- is there a window in the door opposite or is it solid? No, nothing like that, I'm afraid. Um, can Agnar whisper to Soraya, um, if, we've, if we've got to go in, do we want to get one of the others to come and watch this corridor? Or at least get Zoe outside to watch this door? If it's an airlock, that does that... Side. If it's an airlock, does that mean that we should be in a suit before we come out the other side? Is there anything in the airlock, Ben? No, it's completely empty. I mean, I'd imagine if it's made for mass evacuation. Both doors will open. Mm. Mm. Um. How many doors are there down the corridor on this end side, uh, Ben? Four. There are four down the down the side. Okay. Um, uh, six down the left, four down the four right. Down basically. The right, yeah. Well, I guess the way to do things is to search one by one. We can search things one by one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Call um, Usher Usher Zoe over to the doorway at least. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Can I just uh, just send a. Text message. Um, to get Zoe email. basically into the into the emergency door from the corridor outside to watch your backs. Yeah, or at least just make sure that nobody comes out of the emergency door back into the, you know, once we've gone in and the airlock is secured and we're searching. Yep, yeah, that's no problem at all. That's a perfect spot, that. Nice. Okay. So are you entering the airlock? Might as well. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. You enter the airlock, there's nothing distinguishing about it at all, except another sign on the door on the other side saying, you know, um, this way to the escape pods. Um, and again, doors that you can just push open by operating the handle. Oh, we have to take the same approach again. This so yeah. up, carefully push the handle, sort of crouch down a little bit and force it with her, carefully with her hand and shoulder being as as quiet as possible i guess okay and um as you do you peer down and what you can see the other side this time is a much more substantial space it's a long again red lit corridor at the very far end is another sort of double hatch door and this time it has the it has the white emergency lighting on it indicating that it is um the actual access point for um for an escape pod for for an escape vessel so at the far end of this corridor you'd ex- you would expect to find an escape pod literally mounted to the other side of that door okay got it We make our way down. <clears throat> um, I guess Agnar will just show. Yes, yeah, so what we've got, we've got, um, and then there's do- there's two doorways to the south of that, isn't there? There are. There are two doorways on the right, and they're again sort of full width, double width doors, um, which are on the way down to that escape pod. Yes. 
Well, they're going to um, be worth potentially looking in. Yeah. So if we if we get to the first one, I guess, do you want to keep eyes down the corridor and get what? And I'll gesture to Soraya and I'll peek inside and see what we've got the other side of the door. Yeah. So Soraya will go to just the other side of the door and kneel down and keep an eye down the corridor. Right. And Agnar's going to um, press open the door and see what's there. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you um, push the door open, what is revealed is a, a sort of cross corridor. It's not huge um, in terms of its length. It just seems to be a way of getting between these escape routes. Um, and there's nothing visible in it at all. Okay. Uh, he'll turn back to Sarai and shake his head. Are there doors at the other end? Um, yes, there are. There are similar arrangements. Um, I mean, in, in actual fact, the... I'm sorry, I explained that poorly. The the cross corridors are not connected by um, by doors at all. They're just open. Oh, you right. You can actually okay. see into another corridor. Cool. I apologise for that. That was my mistake. No, that's okay. Um, Sarah sort of whispers to Agnar, do you want me to follow you or do you want me to go down the other one? And we'll work down them separately or together. I mean, I suppose if we if we head down here, like we get Zoe bits. to head down and check the next airlock. You know, just stick her head inside. If we if we clear all these corridors, then we know it's one of the escape pods, more than likely, right? Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Does that make sense? Yeah. How about so? How about if I stay at this corner? Um, so it goes down to the next airlock. And I guess you and her sort of might meet in the middle somewhere. And we've got we've still got the three points of entry covered, I guess. OK, so you want Zoe to go down to the, the, the next airlock down. Yes, please. And um, and poke herself through so she can actually see into this main corridor. Um, I was thinking more just check the airlock and make sure there's nobody inside the airlock. But she can uh, still see the corridor that she's in with where we came from. I'm with you. Okay. Does that make sense? And then we yes, can clear the corridors right. this side. Is she can clear all the airlocks? All right. So essentially, <coughs> if, well, keeping on if we yeah, put Zoe um, down there on the um, second airlock, she checks it and reports there's nothing in there that she can see. She's still got eyes on the le on the west corridor. Yep, cool. And then we do the same all the way down. Does that make sense? So are we going to work down with her, or she's just going to clear each one? Are we yeah, no, I guess I guess we work we work down as well. Okay. Am I maybe, coming down, am I coming down maybe, the same corridor as you, or do you want me to go down the one on the right? Do you want to take the other one? Yeah, I'll take. Yeah, I'll take we've got it. We've got it all covered, haven't we? Zoe's yeah. made sure no one's gone out the door that we came in, and if there's no one here. We know it's one of the works for one me. of the escape pods. Do it. All right. Sense? So, Sarai, are you heading to the the eastern cross corridor, so to speak? Yes. Yes, please. Okay. All right. So, if I put you on the corner of that for the moment, um, are you then going to time your walk down so Agnar and you kind of reach the the corridor at the end at the same kind of time? Yeah, if 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 there's going to be cross, cor yeah, the idea is we'll do it, and I guess stop it. If there are cross corridors, stop at each cross corridor. Okay. If it's not, we'll right. just keep going, I guess. Then what I will do then is um, move you guys into the position that I think you will sort of be in at the next point where you would do a a stop and check with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and 
for for me it would look like that basically yeah that looks about with right the two of you having eyes on that corridor yeah okay now this corridor is not empty Ooh. um so the first thing you notice and you arrive more or less at the same moment so you're sort of looking vaguely towards each other down the length of the corridor the first thing you you both notice is that there is in fact a person in this corridor um and and not i mean not just any person um there is um uh, midran daxter oh there he is and he's right there v for victory for <laughs> varga really v for varga, yeah. <laughs> however there is something else in the corridor as well um but it's not very distinct it appears to be sort of on the wall behind him vaguely but you can't easily make it out the emergency lighting isn't ideal for it it just looks like he, there's something he's put there or something that's on the wall um behind him basically um and if i put a little marker there to show you what that looks like uh, that little green circle there indicates the point of that, okay? Yes. That's roughly where it is. Okay. So, it's time to roll for initiative. You can have... Uh, initiative. You can have either intellect or dexterity oh. for, your, um, for your bonus. It's been, it's been a long time. Yeah, I was going to say. a long time. It's been a long But before you do that, um, Ewan did ask if he could use his military tactics to gain an advantage. You can gain an advantage right now. Mm. Um, on your um, initiative role uh, by using your military tactics. Um, and if you roll, um, you know, including your military tactics bonus, if you roll um, above eight, then you get that as a plus on your initiative. Equally, if you roll below eight total, <laughs> that adds to mine. So oh, make it cool. Glorious. But, you know, go big or go home. Um, <laughs> go do big. I get any base stats with that? Um, well, yes, essentially, it? it's your, um, it will be your uh, military tactics um, plus whatever you roll. <coughs> That's all. And I'm just rolling straight initiative. Let's make it good. Oh, that's an eight on the dice plus okay. a three military tactics. Wow. Okay. So that's um, plus three then. To all of your initiative rolls. So that's um, basically die roll plus either dex or intellect, okay. whichever is your best. Thank you, Ewan. Three yeah. plus one is seven, plus the three is ten. Ten for Soraya. Please. Um, Agna? Uh, well, it's kind of a good job I did. I rolled a four, uh, but I do get to add five for my two dexterity and three for me. Okay. Two tactics, so that's so nine. nine. Okay. Um, and Zoe? Um, not what you'd call a wonderful role, <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> These things happen. Uh, but she's still a wonderful person. She is. What she's a darling. She's a lovely person, and she can kill you with her mind. So, you know, she's <laughs> fantastically good value. Um, okay. Um, what that means is that the first person to go is either Soraya or Daxstar. So, um, uh, what's your dex, Soraya? Uh, eight. Eight. Okay, then it is Daxstar who goes first. Uh, All right. Um Okay, he's going to take a pot shot a quick. Um, at Soraya. Pot shot? We're just, we're just friendly people coming down We're here. just trying That's to evacuate good. the ship. Right, what's going on? Did you not hear? Someone Did you not hear there was a big spillage? <laughs> okay. Um, just, okay, so the range is... Well, actually, pretty ideal range, really. Oh, um, for him or me. So, 
he has a Gauss pistol. Um, and he uh, fires it in combat. Oh, that is not a good roll, however. Um, uh, right. Um, that is, well, it, it is very clearly a miss. It added up to a total of six. So, um, he has a clean miss. And then... <laughs> Are you going to redeem that every time? <laughs> every time. <laughs> Until I'm not. Oh, yeah, until, until it fails. <laughs> until Ben's like, I don't care, I'm just fudging this because it's annoying me now. <laughs> no more invincibles. <laughs> okay. Um, he can move. He's not going to yet. Okay. So, um, it is Sarai's turn. Um. Hmm. 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 How do I want to play this? Hmm. Um. She's gonna fire. Hmm. Now, are we trying to take him alive or not? Oh dear. Um. <laughs> she's gonna use her. If I used a minor action, Ben, to bury myself into the wall, would I still be able to fire at him? Like, would I still have line? Or do I need to be a little bit away from the wall to have line? Um, you can essentially use a... Yes, you, you can take cover and then... Um... And then fire, but obviously that will mean you won't be able to take your aiming bonus yeah. for. I will bury myself against that wall, then, please. And okay. Then the thing that was hit, that was on the wall was sort of are we saying head height kind of thing, body height? Um, it's it's larger than that. It's um, it probably runs from at least on the angle that gravity appears to be where he is. It seems to run almost from his ankles up to his chest, maybe. Oh, it's just like those um, Grey Hill Bass Post um, flags, which you can buy on our Etsy store. <laughs> it's, it's very, very much like that. Is, is, is that what it is? It's a Grey Hill Bass flag. As well. uh, you, you think there's a fighting chance, in fact, that he has hung a Grey Hill Bass flag? I think he's a fan. Um, oh, would... <laughs> I mean, he needs some interior design tips if he's going to put it up in this kind of lighting. You know, red light. We need, we, need to get Car, we need to get Cara down. She'll change. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, can I aim for his... I know that it makes things more awkward. Can I aim for his leg, please, Ben? Yes, you can. Okay. That will make your hit chance substantially higher, you understand. My my hit chance... Your, your, sorry, your, um, the target you have to hit in order yeah, to higher. score a hit will go up. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. That's okay, fine. off I'm, you go. I'm, I'm currently just trying to take his, um, his feistiness anyway, if that makes sense. 2d6 plus gonk, gun combat. Plus gonk. I like gonk. Gonk, gonk plus combat. gonk. Plus gonk. 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 And, and gonk. Gonk. And gonk. 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 <laughs> I've got energy plus one on my laser pistol, so... Oh, it's a good gonk. It depends how much higher it needed to be. It's um, a 10 plus 1 is 11. Ooh. An 11, okay. Uh, yes, roll for damage, please. That's 3D plus 4. Ooh. Oh, I've only got 2D. And one's on the floor. Oh, no. <laughs> it's all gone wrong. <laughs> it's all gone <laughs> wrong. Are everywhere. Uh, uh, let me get a third dice. I like to do it properly rather than thing it. Hang on. Oh, goodness sake. Okay, come on. I hate re-rolling. Do you know what I mean? I, I like to roll everything at once, like a, a hand of dice, if that makes sense. Come on. Yep, I, I understand. Oh, I wish I hadn't. Um, nine. Five plus two plus two is a nine. Okay. All right. Um. Of course the janky dice. Yeah, of course the janky dice is one of the twos. Of course it was. <laughs> Classic Danky Joyce. 
go that's... right back away again. That can go. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. That's exactly what I meant to say. That, that can go. <laughs> that dice can go on my dice rehabilitation zone sticker, <laughs> available oh. from the Etsy store for a low, low price. Why? Okay. Why punish those? Why sticker. punish those dice? Give them a space to chill out and return their juju. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. He he um the the um the blast hits him in the leg as you aimed it not perhaps quite as central as you were hoping but it hits him in the leg um and whether or not it's done him any real harm it's hard to tell he certainly reacts to the impact and looks um looks you know startled and rather alarmed <laughs> just um, which um moves us on to agnar uh wonderful um there's a few things I want to do, Ben. Mm -hmm. If I talk you through them, could you talk me through which actions these <laughs> use as I do them? I can try. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so if I want to message Zoe and say we could do with some help, we've got him. <coughs> okay. That's a that's a minor action, communication. Okay. So I use my minor action to do that. And yep. then my major action, I will take aim with my gas pistol at thing on the wall Ooh. okay oh god i hope it's not explosive <laughs> right okay so you're firing oh, have yeah. have a go so you need your slug yeah. um your slug um oh, combat. yeah uh plus plus my deck 36 uh there's an eight on the dice plus three oh. and so 11 I'm, Okay, um, that is a clean hit. Um, it's not even evading. <laughs> <laughs> not even blowing in the wind. Know. <laughs> what, um, what happens, you know, immediately that moment is uh, there is a a sense you get that the the pistol, the shot doesn't um ricochet the way you might expect it to off a off a really hard you know spaceship bulkhead kind of surface um based on the sound and things like that you might even think you'd shot straight through the wall of the corridor ah okay oh, as long as it's not only that gloop from that planet <sighs> Okay. Uh, right, um, yep. Yeah, so that's me done. Yeah, that's you done for this turn. All my actions. Uh, Zoe, um, she can move. She Well, she's only got to get to the doorway, hasn't she? So she can move um, and then take a shot. Uh, obviously, she won't be able to aim or anything. Still, let's uh, move her into position. And then she will take a shot at Daxstar. And nice. Sorry, I just realised I didn't have my dice rehabilitation sticker with me. And that ah. too would definitely do with going on that. <laughs> oh right. Where did where where would you get that dice rehabilitation sticker from, you? I I I believe it's on an Etsy store. It came from my letterbox. <laughs> But um, you can, yeah, you can purchase them on Etsy. Ah, oh, I see. Quite frankly, a bargain for us. <laughs> along, along with a beautiful, beautiful greyhound bust. But I feel sure there's even an, an easier way to do that, isn't there? There is. You mean um, you you could subscribe for a few months? You can get them if, for free by yeah. subscribing with Prime. Yeah, that's right. If you subscribed and with Prime, that's essentially free. <laughs> you you could get these things just sent to you. It's yeah. amazing. It would take yeah. a few months for the stickers, though. But there some will, post, there's do. some postcards that you would get early next year. Mm. And some zines that you would get sent through your email every month. Yeah. Wow. Sure. Wow. Wow. We could, yeah. we could be able to People who subscribe get actual stuff. <laughs> it's great. You get stuff every month. It's magic. It's like it's like being um for that, what's what's the old what's the old People magazine? It's like being one of their members. Saga. It's yeah, it's like being a Saga member. Yeah, some you get something through every month to enjoy. 
Yeah. But for some reason, when you said, what's the old people magazine, I was thinking Reader's Digest. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic magazine, that. Oh. It is. <laughs> uh, right. Um, Zoe, when you add all, everything together, Zoe gets a 14. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, okay. And. Um, 12, 6, 18. Okay. Um, her shot um, hits Daxstar um, on his um, arm, on his left arm, effectively. Um, he barely even noticed she arrived. He was much too focused on the um, on the rest of you, and uh, and he takes that hit, and it's hard. You know, it obviously hurts him. He lets out a very audible yelp of you know real agony. There's torn vac suit and blood sort of gushing down his arm. It's a it's a bad hit. Um, not what you call critical necessarily, but it's certainly, you know, really, really hurt him. Um, and that threw a pretty solidly armored vaccine. Good point. Um, nice. It is, however, his turn. <coughs> okay. All right. Daxter is essentially going to move and he's going to move what you see is he essentially um, hurls himself at the um, thing on the wall mm -hmm. um, and though he has to you know, hit a latch or something as he does it opens and he flies through it and disappears out of sight um, on the other side. Um, now, we're going to roll a dex for him, see if he can do this. Um, it? So it swings open, he flies through it and disappears, and then... Oh, that'll do. That's yeah, like a portal. Um, as it's swinging it's shut, <laughs> as it's swinging shut, a um, a small metallic-looking device just drops back out of the swinging shut hole and lands on the um, on the floor of the corridor, and then rolls out towards the middle and starts rolling back and forth. While it tries to find its level, um, and that's what he does. That's all you can see him do. Uh, <clears throat> um, well, that's not good news, is it? Um, <laughs> Soraya, uh, guessing what it might be, and realizing. She's only uh, what's each square meter and a half normally in it? Meter and a half, basically, yeah. Yeah, so realizing that she could be only um, one, three, six, About like six, six meters, meters away. Yeah, six seven meters. She makes a bee line. She makes a beeline north, if that's okay, to be yep. to get to the other corner, if that makes sense. Um. You can do that if, and you can even go round the other corner. Um, Actually, yeah, that'd be nice. Just to like cower, <laughs> just to just around the other. That puts two corners, and so, yeah, yeah. That, that nice. would require literally all of your movement, though. That's effectively both of your full actions: your move and your major action. That's fine. It might be something else, but in her experience, small metallic things rolling out in someone as someone runs away is not a good thing to be near. Uh, yes, Agnar. <laughs> Um, Agnar will, again, probably making the same assumption, just shout uh, cover out and um, 
spin around, look at Zoe in the door, sort of a bit wide-eyed, and then just put his back up against the wall that he is closest to. Okay, yep, I'm with you. Does that so, make sense? So, in essence, enough around the corner to mean that there's no there's no direct line to the to the object, sort of. Yeah. Like. Okay. Could um. If I've still got a major action left, can I save that as movement until a certain point? No, you can take it now as movement. Yeah. Um, That's fine. Or, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid you've got a really, there's, there's no real holding of actions in Traveller. Cool. That's okay. Not a problem. Um, that is Agnar done then for the time being. Okay. He's certainly uh, not going to push anything. Zoe... Given the fact that these doors are designed to just be pushed open, and even though they're supposed to be pushed open sort of towards the device, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think she's going to trust them enough to open two sets of doors <laughs> and rely on them. So she is going to run the other way. Um and end up basically um, cowering right next to Agnar for exactly the same reason. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for, for extraordinarily obvious reasons, in fact. Yeah. She's going to cower right next to Agnar. Okay. Uh, yeah. And that's her turn. Is it for his um, warmth and floofiness? Yeah. <laughs> Um, the comfort of his being. Oh, you just get that vibe when you're near him. Yeah. Now, am I right in assuming that everyone's basically going to hold position for a, you know, a few seconds to see what happens? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm assuming if... Agnar would know the general views on a grenade or such a device. I mean, obviously, it could be a hand-built custom weapon, but if it's a standard military grenade. Typically, three or four seconds is about right. Yeah. Um, it doesn't actually go off within three or four, but it does three or four after that. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so it's not it's not necessarily the type you'd use for an offensive grenade arrangement, more like a defensive one. It's that kind of thing, but it's the same principle. Um, and indeed, it does go off um, right in the middle of that corridor. And it creates an almighty bang. I mean, it is deafeningly loud. Um, from where you are, and also where Zoe is, um, even though you are outside <coughs> the blast of the grenade, you're far enough away to not really be impacted by it in any way, you can still feel the air pressure. In fact, even Soraya can feel the air pressure when it goes off and hear the rumble and the shockwave. Uh, but for you two, you can even see um, little bits of not very fast moving by that time, but fragments um, from the blast sort of go barreling down the corridor towards the doors. By the time they get there, there's no there's no real energy in them. But a, but a couple of bits bounce off the bulkhead opposite where you and Zoe are and drop at your feet. Um, and it's clearly a fragmentation type weapon. You you can look down and see small pieces of wire and things like that that are there. Um, and yes, the the grenade went off and it went off loud. So, um, Soraya, top of the list. Um, she pauses for a minute, a moment, not not a minute. After all that, and sort of after she sort of unwinces and sort of opens her eyes a bit again, and sort of peels herself off mm -hmm. the wall, and pauses just for like a second to see if her body's getting sucked anywhere, or if suddenly there's a you know the sound of air escaping or anything <laughs> like that. She's checking whether she needs to run for it or she can be more explorative. If that makes sense, it it takes a couple of seconds to be sure because your ears are ringing. If you know what I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, and you rely on them quite a lot to detect pressure and things like that. But um, there doesn't appear to be any cause for alarm. 
Okay. Now we're not trying to be quite so quiet, I guess. She um, she talks over... Because they always have the their wire plugged in to talk through their device, don't they, at these times? Yep. So then she's, she'll openly say to those two, if you guys can hear this, I'm I'm heading down um, back to my corner. I'm going to have a look and see what's going on. Okay. And then, um, so... <laughs> So Soraya heads back to the um, the corner here, um, so that she can um, see what's what's what. Okay. Um, Soraya, um, can you um, uh, roll a straight intellect check for me? Cool. I can. Um, I rather I hadn't, but never mind. Um, <coughs> six plus one is seven. <coughs> Okay, seven. From what you can see, the um, the patch on the wall is somewhat misshapen, a bit shredded, has been damaged by the explosion. Um, but it's still kind of there, a bit. Okay. Um, how trashed is the corridor? Um, it's scored in places, blackened in places, but it seems to be largely intact, functionally speaking. Okay. I'm guessing that's all my... Are we still in turn order? Uh, we are prob. I, I don't want to break us out of it until yeah. I know we're... If you see what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Well, that'd be... I guess that'd be my turn, like... Yep. Radioing okay. through is my small... My minor action, then get into the corner... And looking would be my major action, I guess. So, okay, yeah. um, Agnar. Uh, first thing Agnar does is he'll turn to Zoe, look her up and down, make sure she's okay, and then just say, um, <clears throat> "If you're okay, get out to the get out to the corridor. Watch watch the exit." Uh, he went he went south. I'm sure she saw that anyway. Um, and then. If he's got anything left, I want to do something, <laughs> as is tradition for us, I want to do something that isn't stereotypically a combat, combat action. Can I uh, can I pick up my communicator and call Sharp, please? Yes. <laughs> and tell yep. me tell me when I've uh, done too much. Yep. You, you can certainly, I mean, you can initiate contact. Realistically, we're talking about a combat turn here. It'll probably take the entire turn for her to just answer the call. Okay. You know, um, think about how long it would take her to reach for her phone kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's fine. He will he will do that. Can he move whilst he's doing that? Yeah. Is that pushing it? Yeah, he'll, absolutely. He'll make his way towards that door in the middle of the corridor whilst okay. he's ringing. As, as, as far as he can get. Yeah, with whatever he has left. Yeah, well, it, it'll be essentially one move set. So Perfect. the way I tend to do these is it will it would put um, Agnar very roughly there. Yeah, brilliant. And then okay. that's me done. Okay, um, Zoe, um, she can follow instructions. She is... Question is, does she want to get? She wants to get eyes on the entrance as quickly as possible. So she's actually going to go out through the way she came in, um, which will get her to there if she does nothing but move. So at the end of her turn, she actually has got eyes on the entrance, even though she's nowhere near it. Cool. Okay. Um, she doesn't give any indication. She's only just got there, but she doesn't give any cry of alarm or surprise that would indicate there's anything that would worry her. Beyond the fact that she was just very nearly blown up by a grenade. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Some people mind about that. Uh, some people take it badly, I've heard. Okay. Um, Soraya? I will head to the green... Blob, please. I'll head to the hatch. Okay. Um, for one, two, three, you can actually literally get directly in front of it. Okay. 
um, uh, with with your with your move, your your sort of standard action. So you've got a full action to go if you want to take it. Um. I, I want to look at it. I want to take it in. We've only seen it in from a distance. I'd like to take it in, please, Ben. Uh, can you roll an investigation check for me, please? I can. With intellect. And because its nature has been rather exposed by um, an explosion, which has damaged it, um, yeah. can you uh, also, um, you can take a boon on that. Oh, thank you. Ooh. I've got that. It's my usual plus one, minus one. I tell you, Jack of all trades really helps me get a lot of plus one, minus ones. Um, uh, well, the boon... Um, the boon did no good at all, because I rolled four, four, four. Oh, you're going to need a second. Uh, that's not bad, I suppose. Uh, so that's eight. So it's eight <clears throat> plus one, minus one. Okay. Um, a quick glance... You're not doing a really detailed examination at this point, but a quick glance would indicate that it is a homemade hatchway in a, it, that has been cut in the side of this corridor um, and somewhere where there was not intended to be a hatch. Um, someone has cut a hole through here Get and the then... Um, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that it, it. It's visions, don't do that. I was looking down. Oh, oh. <laughs> Arnie suddenly appeared. Okay, sorry. Carry on. They, they, <laughs> they, they have some, somebody has cut a hole in the side of the of the corridor here, the companion way, and has then covered it with this device. The explosion, the the cover was presumably to disguise what they'd done. Um, but the explosion has ripped it to shreds somewhat. It's it has been um, sliced and cut, and it's now got little slashes and gaps and perforations and holes in it. So it is not a um, a f it, it would no longer pass muster as something that would disguise the hole. Um, <laughs> Though to be fair, it was visible as soon as you saw it anyway, so it wasn't a particularly good disguise. But it was it was a covering for a hole. That's what it was. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um, that moves us on to Agnar. Uh, wonderful. Is is there any answer? Yes, she has um, picked up and said, yeah, can I help you? Uh, the Varga shot at us and set off a grenade. We went through the escape hatch you told us to go through, or that we told you we were going through. Uh, I'd suge I suggest the security team down here at all of the entry points he can cut through walls, or he can move through walls. He's got a device that can let him move through walls, is what Agnar will say, because all he knows is it's he can something, move that's been, something that's been put on the wall and um, allows him to go through walls. Bad juju. Yeah, he's got I a portal. Very much, yeah, I was he's very much portal. thinking portal yeah. as Luke brought up, <laughs> rather than something that just disguises the fact that he's cut through a wall. So, yeah. Indeed. But I think that's okay. all the information. So, yeah, okay, one portal gun. Yes, um, all right, you, you pass that off. She says, um, got it, um, detail on the way. Um, and that will probably use up your entire turn, I'm afraid. That's fair. You can move, though, while you're doing that. If you oh. want to get closer. Um, can I move to the door? Not the green spot, the, the double door to the south. Yes. That's very kind of you. Thank you, Ben. Okay. Yes, you can indeed. So, um, with that done, it's Zoe's go. Um, I'm sure she'll give you a running commentary, but she is going to um, head up to the entrance way where you came in, and she's going to stay there 
um, she'll have, unless you made it a secret call or closed it off from her, she'll have heard your communication with Sharp. So she will um, uh, expect that security will be on their way in a moment through that door. Yeah, no, Agnar's not doing anything secret right about now. <laughs> okay, right, um, top of the list, it's Soraya. Um, can I see through the hat? Can I see through any of the gouges of the hatch, or is it very gnarly and awkward? And it's it's um um roll an investigation um with um with Bane for me, please. Uh, oh, that's a shame because I just hit like the opposite. <laughs> yeah, hit an eight and a, t- a six. Six. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Ugh. Um, you can see through in the sense that you can make out a vague impression of what's on the other side, but it's not like you're getting a really clear picture. The only thing that is worth sort of mentioning is that what you're looking into appears to be dark. So dark. Very dark. So, so dark. Um, I want, can I try and pull it open, but in a way that, because it, it went side to side. Did it go outwards or inwards from when? Because I saw him dive into it. What was the... Yeah, he he pushed it away from him. So effectively, you could you could open it by pushing it open away from you. Can I attempt to push it, but not me standing there like some idiot with a silhouette? Like, oh, here I am. Um, okay. You know, so, so, like, if it, let's say it was going from, I don't know if it does, but say, for example, it opened from, as we as we're looking at the map from the right-hand side, that is the hinge. You know, it, like, it actually effectively opens upwards like a cat flap. Oh, that's going to be hard to do. Um, can I um, lean against the wall and as much as possible sort of nudge it with the pistol so that I'm not so I'm hidden from it basically so I'm at the side and sort of like poking at it if I've got the strength for it who knows but yeah anyway, you can do that to show that okay. someone's trying to do something but without making a target all right yes you um you you push the um the thing open um As you do, light comes on, on the other side, mm-hmm. and it's fairly bright. Um, it, it's not sort of like high intensity lighting, but because you're in a fairly dimly lit emergency corridor, because of that, it seems really quite bright. And for, for a second or so, it, it, you sort of blink a couple of times before you see what you're looking at. Um, what's on the other side is a bathroom. And the light probably came on because it sensed the movement of the hatch opening. The thing you just pushed open. Um, So it turned the light on thinking there was someone in there. Interesting. Um, Have I got have I got enough of a turn left to get a quick glance if I can see, you know, without peering around corners or anything, but if there's an obvious figure standing? Um, yes. Um, roll a recon or streetwise? Um, let's make it a streetwise. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that might be enough. Um, Eight plus one, nine. And you can add your intellect to that as well. Ten. Okay. Um, With that, you kind of identify three things all at once. Uh, One is um, there's no one in there that you can see. And if, if there, if, um, Daxstar's in there. He's very, very well hidden. You know. Yeah. Uh, this is not a big room. 
um, and because of the angle you're coming at it you've actually got access to you can see at least one of the large mirrors in the room so there's almost nowhere he could be hiding in there got you um number two the it's a standard fairly generic fresher type um bathroom just like you'd find off any stateroom on the on the ship pretty much there is there is nothing unusual about it it could be the one in your own stateroom and three having said there's absolutely nothing unusual about it there in <coughs> fact is something quite unusual about it hmm. um at least um recognizably unusual uh which is that there are um marks on the floor where um somebody has set up equipment um like a tripod mark and it's it's scuffed on the floor and it hasn't been cleaned so so it's visible on the floor Interesting. in fact there's a fourth thing you've identified which is that you're out of combat uh, okay um, so we're out of combat that's with that done <laughs> we can now roll the clock forward just a little bit until the um the people arrive with zoe and you can either stay in the corridor and wait for them, or you can climb through into the bathroom. Your call. I still don't trust the fact this isn't an actual portal thing, and I'm going to like be on some ship elsewhere, well, or just somewhere else entirely on the ship. Yeah, in his in his apartment. Ah, oh, anyone's <laughs> could be Brett's. Oh no, not Brett. <laughs> Poor Brett. Oh yeah, the tripod. Um. Um, Soraya's, as Soraya's going to say to Agnar, Agnar, humour me. I'm going to go through this. Do you want to see if you can find an exit, an entrance to here down your way? Should we meet in the middle? I was going this way anyway. I'll, uh, I'll see you there. I'll tell you, you can, okay. go, your, you can go your own way. <laughs> well, remember, these corridors are twisting and they're weirdly angled, so... By the time you've sort of wandered down to the other side of that um, gap, um, which, you know, in, indeed you can, um, if, if I show you, uh, what can I show you, this sort of um, area, uh, by the time you've done that, you're both on a different vertical level and at a different angle as it sort of twists its way through with different gravity right okay so, um, it could so be, they it... don't they 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 only look like this sort of in a snapshot in one direction yeah so it could um, be a perfectly physical portal rather than a transport you to another place portal it most definitely it could. could just be a hole but, but it but could the, be a hole but the by plane, the power of gravity and shapes i could I the whole 3d the axis yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. I could be up a level. Yeah. I mean, once yeah. Agnar's stuck his head through it and realised that it's probably just a corridor, I mean, he could, I, I assume he could put two and two together yes. and figure out that there's not going to be anything yeah, I in mean, the void think, on this level. Uh, without being silly about it, to sort of simplify things a little bit, you have found the only genuinely unusual thing in this area. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he would stick his head back and say, uh, "I think, I think it's gone somewhere else. <laughs> it's okay. just a corridor down here." Um, so I will stick her head back out of the hatch and say, "Well, don't leave me hanging. Then we'll leave. We'll leave this to the security guys." Yeah. Okay. Um, it is just a moment or two later when Zoe reappears down the corridor, showing. Um, a couple of security people down um, and she points out a few you know the local tourist attractions the the markings on the floor where the grenade went off and hmm. the 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 damaged hatch and and that sort of thing um, and uh, and she sort of makes sure they take special note of the fairly substantial puddle of blood that she uh, she made Daxter <laughs> leave on the um, 
on the side of the corridor, um, insisting that they photograph that and then telling them that she'll sign it for them if, she, if they want. Um, <laughs> but after a sort of couple of check-ins, they uh, they sort of peer through as well, and one of them hops into the um, bathroom. Um, and then he does indeed stick his head back out again and say, we're going to have to get someone come in from the other side and um, and check the, you know, secure the, the area properly. Um, um. And they say, thank you very much. Um, we've got your details. I imagine we'll be calling you in for statements. But for now, thanks. Uh, Sarai throws her arms up in the air. It's like, oh, more statements. Will I ever get to see any of these games? Ah, oh, another. It's all your fault, Agno. <laughs> <laughs> He, he gets a bit speechless and stuttery at that, I suppose. I mean, I, I just, and you, and we, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's watching the what now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And probably feels a bit guilty, to be fair. <laughs> yes, quite, quite possibly. Okay. Um, there is um, a brief exchange between the um, the the security people and um, someone you assume is sharp who's chatting with them but it could be anyone in authority back at their base um, and you do indeed um, overhear the news that the apartment um, was Brett Sagar's because he was on the same level as Brett wasn't he no he was one level up from he was on the same level but the entrance you came in through is one level down yeah yeah, yeah. So but if yes, we're going, if we're going up on a uh, up on a plane, or the portal, the hole in the wall is going up on a plane, that will indeed. Oh, this this throws up a lot of options, though. This is very interesting. It does bring up the question why he went down the corridor if he didn't need to. But anyway, it's neither here nor there, so. Uh, and that is where we'll call it for tonight. <laughs> oh, that's oh. good. That's a good. Oh, now I'm going to be sat on the toilet tomorrow doing all some calculations and things. That We're is... going to have to 3D map it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we need I'll... a model. I'll th- it's I'll a th- mashed potato. I'll 3D, I'll 3D print it. If you can get a model together, I'll 3D print uh, that's it. That's a better idea. Pour over it. I like the mashed Definitely potato. Definitely the though. way to go. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Clearly the way to go. Oh, yes. I can, can I just say, Ben, how petrified I was when uh, Soraya pushed open the cat flap having it having been dark the other side and i was just thinking he's gonna have gone outside the ship was he where <laughs> was he wearing a vac suit are we yeah, wearing say vac vac suits? <laughs> that's why i said what, do i get Man. sucked anywhere <laughs> yeah. oh yeah just poking my head out into this into space just that's casually my... open it expecting some corridor that's, or him to be there as i turn around again with my eyes ball <laughs> Eyeballs popped. Yeah. I can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Excellent that, uh, stuff. That was good, Ben. I enjoyed that. That was a nice that change. That was wonderful. Up. That was good, Ben. Yeah. And tied some things nicely together, I feel. Oh. Excellent. And well, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed questions for us to, <laughs> to ponder over. Yes, I'm glad you enjoyed. And I'm, I'm sure, it, you, you know, you may find opportunity to to discuss a way for screwing everything up for me before next week. I'm, I'm sure you'll manage that. <laughs> it feels like we might have to this week. I'll, yes. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah. And um, so before we go, we need to, um, well, first of all, say thank you to everyone for watching. It's much Ooh. appreciated as always. Thank you for that. And we have to talk about what we're going to do tomorrow. Yes. Um, because we have an unusual one tomorrow. Tomorrow is, is another abject failure at our ability to feed ourselves. I know. Isn't it? We we are failing to feed ourselves on a truly epic level. It's upsetting, um, quite frankly. In, in fact, I'm seriously thinking about writing our failure to feed ourselves <laughs> as a campaign for a future version of Traveller. Um, will the boys ever get to a Japanese restaurant together? Will they ever make it to a Japanese <laughs> campaign? For sure. 
It's too However, upsetting. the good news is that because we're not doing a Japanese restaurant tomorrow, we are doing something else. We're going to do, as part of our one-shot winter, we're going to do a one-shot tabletop RPG game. Um, a very old one, a very old-fashioned one, and a very slimline one. Um, I'm frankly really excited. And we're going to play the first um, of the little adventures in this, in the uh, fighting fantasy um, rule book, which was at the time described as the introductory role playing game. In in reality, nowadays they just call it rules light. It's <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> but it was introductory at the time when Advanced Dungeons and Dragons required your own library. Uh, <laughs> and and so we're going to do that. We're going to play a a very old fashioned, published in 1984, um, introductory tabletop RPG. Okay, so if you can, join us for that, 11 o'clock UK time, um, which would be um, enormous fun. Don't tell me it's older than Ewan. <laughs> it is older than... Oh, I was going to say it, Luke. I was going to say it. <laughs> but I didn't want to. <laughs> oh. it, is, it is disappointing when, when you discover that... Ewan is younger than some of the things I own and bought myself with my own pocket money. But at least Ewan has heard of them. He is familiar to some extent with them. Yeah, that, that, that is true. That is true. I mean, so, they at least have longevity. So if you're if you're interested in really classic, mm. old-fashioned tabletop RPG, it's going to be fun. Uh, tomorrow night, we're going to give it a it shot. It's going to be fun. The Wizard of Whiskey. The Wizard yeah. of Whiskey. And uh, what was, I, I forget the, the Bishop of Beer. The Bishop of Beer. The Bishop of Beer. We could have gone, uh, we, we might go bad. The Viscount mm. of Vodka. The Deacon of Dubonnet. Nice. Uh, ooh. The Cleric of Corvassier. <laughs> 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 uh, Not uh, sure that requires a new, but I'll take it. <laughs> the, 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 the Pastor of Perno. Uh, ah, that's good. good. Mm, that and is good. The Regent of Rikar. <laughs> um, Visions asks an important question. When are we breaking out tunnels and trolls? Um, oh, that is a good question. I mean, it is a good question. I must confess, though I, I did play it, I think, once or twice as a kid, I've never owned any of the accoutrement. Oh. Um, so, and I, I think I'm right in saying they still publish it, and it's like the 711th edition now um it's one of those ones like uh cthulhu that has just gone through edition after edition yeah i'll tell you what i'll check it out we'll have a we'll have a little look <laughs> yeah not promising anything but we'll have a look <laughs> yeah well we, we shall give it a shot with the margrave of merlot or whatever we do uh, uh, <laughs> be the, the barbarian of something I think that feels right for tomorrow. Some brainless beef hunk. <laughs> she plays myself for once. Shouting nerds at everyone. Well, thanks, Visions, for joining us at the end. That was nice. That was a nice bonus, man. Thank you. Yeah, yes, it's thank been you for coming nice along. Nice to see you. And, and it's lo lovely to have everyone here. Thank you very much for this evening. It's brilliant. Cool. Yeah. Well, have a good Saturday, everyone, and we'll see you tomorrow night at 11 UK time. For some old fashioned pre Ewan gaming. It's the best kind of gaming, to be fair. <laughs> it's the best kind of anything, pre Ewan anything. <laughs> Cheers, guys. See ya. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Cheers.